Hello, what's up? How y'all doing today? Happy Tuesday. I do apologize for my tardiness. I had to emergency take Bambi to the vet so she can get her updated prescription and it took a little longer than planned, but we are here. We are back in the building. Okay. Come on in. Come on in. Welcome everybody to another round. We are back with Summer House Martha's Vineyard season two, episode three. And if you are new here, do me a favor, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And all my new members, returning people, so new subscribers, uh, not new subscribers, but old subscribers, welcome back. I'm glad you are back here with us. Hey, I see that some things are working in the chat for my members. I am so glad to see this, okay? I am glad to see that some of our little perks are working. I will be working on more. I had to just put a few out just to give it a test to see that it is working, but I am glad to see that they are. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna get some more perks going on and all these other little fun little things since they gave it to us to work with. I'm gonna be playing with them. We gonna think of some stuff. Y'all let me know what y'all wanna have, you know? I could put some little pop, pop, some little pew pews on there and stuff like that too, you know, get y'all some real ARs going. <laughs> Nah, we're going we gonna to be good. They might ban me for the pew pews. Okay, we're going to see. Maybe I'll just write pew pew. Maybe I'll just write pew pew on there. That's what we do. We'll, we'll have it written pew pew so you can get the pew pew up on it. All right. But we are here. I'm glad you are all in the building. I'm glad, Brandy J, you are all caught up, baby. Child, it is it's worth the watch. Trust me. Hey, Monique. Hey, Kay, Kay Calloway. I know you was going to check out me. You're going to put an APB out on me. Thank you very much. Picky P, hey, Kimberly Book, I mean, Book with Kimberly, hey, how you doing? And always a pleasure with my girl, L. Sid. that's Big Sis over there. You know, we cuts up every time we get together. Child, this episode, this episode was given a whole bunch of nothing, okay? Every time we get into a table, it be just like this. Every time we get into a table scene, it's like... There have been a lot of lies set around this dinner table here tonight, but that you can't believe. And child, <laughs> Bree was like... <laughs> That y'all can't believe. I'm going to get down to the bottom of it, okay? <laughs> Brie was not playing. She was standing on business, okay? She was standing on business, but... Lies! Y'all know, there you go, lies, there is, the y'all know how I feel about Brie. You know, she'd be a little she be a little extra with it, okay? She's she a little dramatical in the words of Flavor Flav. She's a little dramatical sometimes, all right? Anyways, of course, I'm supposed to be joined by two other people who... Uh, clearly was waiting on me and all of a sudden now they busy go figures okay go figure so anyway i'm gonna go ahead get into this episode and we're gonna do, make it do what it do mm. and for those that was asking for the homemade medicine balls okay this is the brand this is the brand right here these are the flavors you can make your homemade medicine ball. You can add a little something, something the way I do, because I add, I add lemonade. Um, this time I ain't got as much lemonade, so it's a little, it's a little under the, under, under par for me. But I add lemonade, and I also add sugar-free vanilla syrup. But you know, make yours the way you want, and then you know. Starbucks can't get your money no more, okay? If you are on a ban from Starbucks and all these other companies, you got to learn how to deal without them, all right? And and yes, yeah, shout out to El Cid. This is her new year, okay? So she is out day drinking <laughs> with the auto glasses out. I mean, the shot glasses out. She is day drinking right now. Shout out to you, all right? I hope you bringing in your new year with a good one. Now, does everybody ask about the movies that they asked Amir that, that he's seen? Child, listen, clearly everybody ain't seen a lot of movies we done seen, L.C. It, so there's that. It was 9, 6.09 p.m. on a Friday night. This is still day three. And we are back when Nick still questioned the ladies about him being filzy and handsy. Nick with the hands, okay? Still, they still with the touchy conversation. <laughs> pun, on, pun intended, okay? They was with the touchy conversation. And I agree with Nick when he says, if we basically friends, why y'all just can't tell me directly? Because that's what I said last week. If y'all his friends, just go ahead and tell that man, hey, 
I don't like when you touch me here. You make me feel uncomfortable. Now, this week, they, they're making it seem to Preston. They're making it seem to Preston that they feel uncomfortable about his hands or whatever. But in these confessionals today, it's Jordan talking about, well, it, I mean, it's fine. We're friends and all. It's not like he's trying to do the most and, and put his thing in other people, in people's places and all this stuff. But he got a girlfriend. See, I told y'all, they'll be fine with him doing all this. It's, it's just a matter of that he got a girlfriend and they found out about the girlfriend. But it was fine when he appeared to be single, apparently. If you feel uncomfortable about him putting his hands on you, whether he's single or not, that should be addressed, period. It shouldn't be a way to, oh, because you got a girlfriend now, you can't be putting your hands on me. You don't like your girlfriend since you're putting your hands on me. It's like we we've been doing this. We've been going down this road for some time now. It's not about that. Like if I have friend male friends that I don't want them touching me in a certain way, it's just politely. Let me reshift your hand. Let me remind you. Hey, hey, hey. We not cool like that. We friends, but we not friends in that manner. That's all it is. I don't really understand. Exactly, L said. Tell him they he he hands in they mouthy. So just be straight up with your friend. If that's your friend, tell him straight up. And I got a question for the audience. I should have put this as a poll, but I got a question for the audience because Bria was saying that Milo looks like Alex. <laughs> Do y'all think Milo takes after Alex? Is is Alex Milo's real dad? Can y'all tell me that? Can y'all tell me, do y'all know who Milo's real father is? Could it be Alex? I'll, I'll, I'll wait. Maybe Alex is, the, maybe Alex is the pappy. I don't know. We got, we got to work it out. <laughs> we, we trying to find out. We trying to find out. I'm trying to get down Maury on the phone. You do, you do and do. Mm. I need more lemonade in this one. This ain't hitting. This ain't hitting the way I like it. I don't know. Milo, the results are in. Uh, in the case of two-year-old Milo, Alex, you are the father. <laughs> we can see Alex running through that house and Milo chasing them. Come back, daddy. <laughs> oh, listen, we got a little time to get into this when it wrong. Because people out here acting like it's it's community. They, you know what? Community pain must be good while it's circulating through the community. It's circulating like American dollars within the community, baby. That thing be... <laughs> That thing be on rotation, baby. You need to hear Alex bark. <laughs> Community pain be rotating in the in the thing. And so they trying to make Alex the residential slangers, I guess. I don't know what's happening right now. But as we get into this, this uh, episode, child, I'm like... Not the community pain ain't good. It's just used. I mean, it, it's it is obviously it's not great, but it has to be hitting on something when people knowingly. It's the, it's the difference about the secret community pain. When the secret community pain is out there, it's possible nobody talking about it because they want to forget about it. But when I, we talking about it and we still like we about to betray ourselves saying I usually don't go behind people. I don't want nobody sloppy seconds, but then still trying to hit on the sloppy seconds. It got to be hitting on something. I, I'm i just my logically speaking, it got to be hitting on something because ain't no way I'm going to betray myself saying I don't want somebody else's pain or as in the words of summer, the thing that's been up inside her coming up inside me next. Unless it got to be the, like some some Dylon spitting hot fire. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I have no clue, but we'll get into it. So tonight's party is supposed to be a neon theme pool party. Uh, Shanice is throwing it. 
and Carla and Shanice is on the phone. Shanice on the phone with her mama. She tells us her, her all about Summer and what Summer had to say about her being broke five broke and she ain't got it. And the mom was kind of a real one. She was like, F her. Don't worry about what the heck she going, got going on. She ain't the best dress anyway. She not into a, she ain't a fascination. She ain't doing, she ain't hitting on nothing. So don't be worried about what that girl think. And then the mama took a whole left turn and went down a very dark road that I was not expecting to go down when Shanice said she was going to get on the slip and slide in the nude. She said, no. And I was like, okay, for the no, because we, we don't need to see no more Shanice anymore. And then she was like, not unless Alex does too. And I was like, huh? Where are we going with this, Ma? Where am I going with this? It, 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 say what now? But, you know, can't expect nonetheless. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm not going to talk about anybody, Mama, but Shanice is the product of that. So there's that, okay? Mm, mm, mm. I was like, I don't know if anybody care to see. Um, you know what? Maybe they do. Maybe they do. I know Noel cares to see Alex naked. So a couple of people might not hurt by seeing that. Okay. I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure. But it is what it is. And then I got another question for the audience. I got another question. Orange y'all feeling Noel or no? Orange y'all feeling Noel? Orange y'all? Anyone? Anyone? Any orange juice? No? Nobody's feeling? Hmm. What? You didn't hear the mama say that? You better run that back when in Rome. Okay. Y'all was feeling y'all was feeling Noel. Yeah. Noel got a nice little southern vibe. She she a cool girl. She, she don't she don't read signs too well sometimes, but that's all right. That's all right. She young and having fun right now. She's in her singledom. Okay, but listen, I'm gonna give her credit. I don't know. I don't know. Let me see if this one is ready. Hello, my guy. Hi, <laughs> Lou. What's the way my dog biscuit? Got you like a Popeye's biscuit, too. Got you stuck. <laughs> Baby, I was in deep. Cost clean, having busy. All right, listen. All right, listen. Where do I start? Where are we starting from? Tell me where we need to start from. Because um, <laughs> I got, I got, I was just I got questions. I got answers. I just got. I was just doing the opening scenes until y'all got here or whatever and stuff. So we can go back to finish off with Nick. With the Nick and the conversation with the ladies about being handsy. Yeah, look, I mean, listen, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, I think the conversation actually got wasted um, because uh, I think, let me, not say, let me not say it got wasted. Let me, let me be real. I think there's obviously a conversation that hasn't happened, right, between the girls and him, a real conversation, right, which is in reality and also Preston as well, right? Because actually, if the girls don't feel no type of way, then they should have had a conversation with Preston and let him know that this conversation didn't need to happen. Yes, he's handsy, but you know what? It's all fun and good, right? It should have never got to a point where you're insinuating that he may be doing too much, yeah? Now, if you think that he's doing too much for his girlfriend, say that. Be honest, listen, I think he's doing too much for his girlfriend, but it's got nothing to do with me because that's the reality of what it actually is, right? Because now, now, we've got, now, he, now he, we've got him pacing up and down like he's Quicksilver in DC, and it's like he doesn't need to be uh, doing that, right? But because Preston's gone to tell him that, almost in a sense, you're kind of making these girls a little bit uncomfortable. He's now having to go and have a conversation with the ladies to make sure that he's not obviously doing something that he shouldn't be doing, which is sexual assault or some um, harassment, right? Which is a very heavy thing. So now because of a poor communication and because people don't want to be accountable for what they're, for the, for the stuff they're doing, people are doing dark arts and not being real about it. Oh, because dark arts, everybody thinks that it's just because the person who's doing it. No, when you participate, you are part of dark arts. If you know he has a girlfriend, right? And he's touching you inappropriately. You got to let him know, I've got some boundaries, your girl, I know your girl, so I'm not trying to have it. If he's being handsy and he has a girl and you want him to touch you, then by all means, don't go and say to Preston like, oh, he got a girl and I don't know why he's doing what he's doing. No, no, shut, as my, 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 my good lady would say from the UK, shut it down. You know what I'm saying to you? Don't let that conversation go left because now Preston, by all means, you know, 
Um, I don't know. I can't remember if Preston, if Preston said he was going to speak to him um, about the issue. I can't actually remember if that actually happened or whether he took it upon himself as well. Maybe Preston also too has got a little bit of accountability here. Maybe he should discuss with the ladies first. Like, hey, ladies, do you want, do you want me to have a conversation with him? Because I'll let him know um, that, you know, maybe he's been a little bit handsy. I can't remember if he did or not. But either way, um, you know, you know, the ladies know exactly what they're doing. If you know you're if you know you're comfortable with him touching you, but you know you're having a bit of fun with it, the fact that he's been handsy and you feel like it's a disrespect to his girlfriend, then you're also part of the disrespect. So either you shut it down, okay, or we're not gonna talk to Preston as if we don't know what's going on. You know what I mean? Yeah. That was exactly my point in the beginning, because I also said, like Nick said, I'm with him. If we're such good friends, you tell me directly. Don't start the rumor mill. Uh, I'm handsy, I got these things, I'm doing too much or whatever when I'm getting drunk. When I'm your friend, you can just come to me, hey, you know, when you get drunk, you make me feel a little uncomfortable. When you get drunk, I feel like you're disrespecting your woman or whatnot. And I also said before you got here, it was fine and dandy while he's single or y'all thought he was single. Now that you know that he has a lady, it's a problem. And to me, that's kind of a problem. If you have a boundary, if you have a strict boundary of not being one to be touched, keep it even whether he's single or not you know it, it sounds like it's all fine and stuff until you realize he got a girlfriend it's like oh well let me not disrespect her or whatever but it was you didn't say nothing last season let's be honest you really didn't say anything last season even when you found out he had a girlfriend you didn't be like hey bro you was doing all this touching on me while you had a girlfriend that's wild so I, I just be like, you got to keep it consistent with your friends or not. If And if it's your friend, just go directly to him. Don't go in between friends because it's different if Preston was his boy. Preston is not his boy. You know, maybe if it, if it was his boy, like I go to you and be like, yo, yo. And I got Sean in the background, but um, coach Sean is a little handsy. I know you two are boys, so it can it, you were like a mediator between the two. Maybe you could find a way to talk to Sean where I've make it easier for it or whatever but this is silas boy he don't know nick like <laughs> no way either and stuff like that he just met him too so y'all been hanging with nick y'all are more closer to nick than he is so just tell him directly let me get sean up here hey sean what's going on we was just talking about uh where we left off in last episode with nick and the ladies conversation yeah, um, I, I had mentioned it briefly last week when, when we saw kind of like the lead into this. And I said, I really don't think Cyrus should have been the one to, Preston, I'm sorry, should have been the one to carry that message. You know, he, you know, it, it should have been navigated better. If that's what, if that was something they, if it was what they said, where it wasn't that big deal, you know, it wasn't like a big issue for them, but they just wanted him to kind of be more conscious of it. Then maybe even knowing how it sounds, they could have taken it off camera. You know what I mean? Like, and had that conversation just as a one-on-one, -on -one, hey, bro, you know, maybe they're, they're in a car, you know, on their way to something before they start filming and just have that conversation. They all seem to, you know, have a good level of communication. So, Unless they had, you know, discussed that they wanted this to play out, which I don't think it was, because from the looks of it, with Jordan being half under the covers, <laughs> all the way under the covers, and uh, you know, Summer being in bed, I don't think they were even prepared to have the conversation. So, I mean, listen, it happens; these things happen. But I think Kojo, you mentioned it last time too. I just think they kind of don't like him, so it's kind of like he gives me the ick. So. <laughs> they just they just decided to talk about it now. Yep, 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 yep. I don't know. I have a quick question because I asked the audience already. Um, Bria brought this up. Does Milo look like Alex? Milo, does he look like Alex? Does he take after Alex? <laughs> Is Abby starting to look like you, Sean? Mm, yeah, no. <laughs> Unless I look like a blonde. Unless I look like a blonde. <laughs> 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 Depending on the season, right? <laughs> 
Yeah, so. I guess he's lanky. <laughs> I guess maybe because the dog is lanky <laughs> and so is he. All right. <laughs> Just had to ask that fun question because Bria brought it up. So <laughs> she's saying that it, Milo looks kind of like Alex. So anyways, um, this whole thing with Shanice and Summer, because we know that Shanice ends up talking to her mom about the situation. And I guess they semi tried to address it again, though Shanice says that she don't want to have a conversation because she done had a conversation already. How y'all feel about this back and forth that end up happening at the last dinner that in turn jumps uh, has Jordan jumping in? We'll cover that too, because Jordan actually has a sidebar with Shanice about some altercation in front of her building. I mean, listen, I, I think it was a little, I don't know, it was a bit weird. I think it was a bit weird. I was like, when she told the story, I was like, at first I was like, okay, I kind of get it. But then after I was like, wait, what, why did she have to tell that story? What, what is she trying to say? Like, okay, so Summer was chewing someone's face off in front of your building. Baby. Okay. All right. I'm like, so Jordan, what do you, what do you, what, what do you want me to do? You want me to, you want me to cuss her out because she was chewing someone's face on you want me to have a bad Im image of her because one night she was a little bit, maybe too drunk and was kissing one of your employees, your, your, your colleagues, or whatever. You, you want me to look at her in a particular way? Like, I was like, what, what, what part of the story are you, what are you trying to, what do you want us to know, really? Um, and I think, again, that's why I was saying that it was a little bit like, I feel like we're, we're going down a slippery slope with Jordan at this point, because you already got your Jasmine beef. Now you got this beef, now you're trying to have this beef with Summer because Summer, because Shanice got a problem with her. And now you got a beef at the end of the episode too, because we saw you in the car. What's really your problem? Now let's, let's really talk about it. What's really your problem? Is it the fact that you see Summer as your mirror, that both of you are wild and your mouth is sharp and both of you can talk the wildest when you need to? What, what's the actual issue here? Because I'm, I'm confused as to what the real beef, um, you know, is, you know what I mean? So someone said about her being the only black person. I think we also need to look at that. Her being the only black person and what, being drunk, like that's like, like, it's, like was she was she being completely crazy? Was she screaming and shouting and hollering or was she was, she was kissing somebody? I mean, listen, that's never been a crime. I think sometimes we as black people try to judge ourselves way too harshly. We're still in the chains and the ropes of our plantation field, waiting for the master to come and see like what we're doing and lock us up again because look, someone kissing someone at the front of their house, you know, listen, we've all been in situations where we have a friend uh, you know, they're a little bit too drunk and they're kissing somebody probably way too much. You know what I'm saying? You, you get over it, you move on, it's your friend. You know what I mean? But that's how I knew it wasn't our friend. That's how, that's how I knew that. You 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 dropping this this story, it makes it just gives haterish. Do you get what I'm saying to you? Like, it gives what gossiping right now. Do you get what I'm saying to you? With the person who has a beef of her. So it's like, I don't know. I was just wondering what the impetus of the conversation really was trying to touch. And it almost made it sift like, I'm, it almost made it feel like, okay, I'm very you know, I have my decorum, I have my class, you know what I mean? And, you know, this this vagabond decided to be right in front of my house and kiss and slobber over somebody, you know? It's just not my class. And it gave that little bit of air. And I, just, I was like, I, I don't... I was just like, babe, what are you really doing? And I was like, that for me is not a friend, you know what I mean? So you ain't no better than Summer, because Summer did the same thing to well. okay? You don't be talking about how you really feel. You did, so, sorry, Summer did the same thing to Shanice. At this point, it's given... A lot of backbiting. So, yeah, I wasn't sure what was going on there. Yeah, I was trying to listen because um, Jordan was just rattling off things. And I, I, I couldn't figure out how to put my captions on <laughs> when I was rushing earlier to try to rewatch it. Because I was like, did she say she was making out with another girl? Because <laughs> then that got my antenna. Because I think she said it was a girl kiss. I was like, she was talking so fast. And I was like. I need to get the captions. Sound like it was a bartender or somebody from the club the night before. Yeah, she said her favorite bartender, but then I heard something girl kiss, something kiss girl. Da, da. So I'm like, I need the captions because I wanna I wanna understand because then 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 it makes it really spicy. Uh but yeah, in that moment, I was like, you you ain't got a friend in her. You don't have a friend in her because how are you gonna turn on somebody that quick? You know, you're gonna turn on her like boom and jump sides because meanwhile most of the time her and summer 
you know, her and Summer are are thick as thieves. So now you were like, oh, I had to curse her out. I don't like when people start talking like that. Don't don't like put 10 on two because you probably just said something slick, like a little slick, normal Jordan passive aggressive comment like, hey, I would just prefer you not do that. So if you already adjusted with her, that's another thing I don't like. You address something with somebody and now you resurfacing it to tell it to somebody else. And now it's publicized for everybody. Yeah, I'm not really cool with with how she aired her out like that. Uh, if it did happen, I mean, I can understand that. Listen, uh, when I'm home, you know, and especially if you're in a multi-unit dwelling, it's not like you're in front of your house in a separate place. I might be a little concerned. I'm not going to flip out. But if somebody does something a little, you know, reckless or something that I think is kind of, you know, going to make me feel some type of way, I might talk to them about it. But I'm not going to blast everybody. I'm not going to make it public, you know, for the world to know. But I will talk to them and be like, hey, listen, I just I'd appreciate that. Like sometimes you might have friends over and they get a little too drunk and it's loud. You know, I live in an apartment building, so I don't want necessarily my neighbors that I see every day to be like, oh, Sean's a party guy. All he has is people screaming and yelling down the hallways. You know what I mean? So I might say, hey, guys, you know, just let's let's just keep it down a little bit. You know what I mean? And that's that that might be that. But, you know. So we know Summer has some issues and she's a problem. But in this scenario, Jordan is definitely a problem because one, let's let's rewind it. Jordan is Jasmine's friend. Summer is Shanice's friend. So now you're interfering with these two friends, debug, they, their beef by being a K, K, uh, agent of chaos. Because what is the point of telling that story? Oh, you know that I had, to, I had to have this issue with her or whatever and stuff. And it's not even that deep. First of all, you're telling the person that's running around the whole house every single chance she get naked about somebody tugging somebody down. The person who wants to have sex with ever she can, however she can, you know what I'm saying? About her friend, her friend tugging somebody down. If I was Shanice, I'd be thinking I can't really trust you either because you a bit judge yourself. Like, child, I like doing a whole bunch of little things that she, you you mad at her about doing. <laughs> I can't, you can't be trusted. So Shanice better be watching Jordan with a side eye. And then on top of it, you're inserting yourself into their beef as, as, Shanice's friend, instead of just talking to Summer saying, you know, that wasn't too cool. Y'all have built up a rapport with each other. Y'all been to Jamaica. Y'all been hanging out all summer. You basically iced out your own friend to hang with her. This lady was at your house and you you didn't get the invite because she was at your house for Alex's event and all this stuff like that. Y'all have built some type of friendship that you can once again talk directly to her. You two was just in the bed with when Nick came in the room with his issues but y'all like to be passive aggressive don't talk directly to nobody and so this is how all this mess gets stirred in the pot and we beefing at the end of the table and like you said coach i'm recognizing i can't just talk to you like i talk to everybody else summer is that friend on that side of the group where jordan is on this side of the group we those hard talking we say what we won't get loud or whatever and everybody just let us do it oh because it's jordan oh because it's summer but when these two to get together, they can't do it to each other. And the other one just backs down. It's going to go toe to toe because both of them have the same personality. And I think that's really what Jordan's issue, besides the fact that let's not forget when Summer showed up, Alex's attention went to Summer off of Jordan. So there's still some possibly some underlining tension because of that, even though we know Jordan didn't really cut for Alex. She likes the attention. She liked to tell us she don't like the attention, but she likes the attention. Now that Summer got her beef with Alex, she lashing out on everybody <laughs> instead of just directing it to Alex. Like, Shanice is your friend. You could have pulled it aside like, girl, I, I didn't mean it like that. They just asked the question. We was all having fun and games. I know you're going through your stuff. But I was just saying out of everybody, when it comes to style, you just basic with your bathing suits, whatever the case may be. But you never once went to her and apologized just for saying what you said and, and understanding that you made her feel some type of way in the moment. Not once. I don't even recall at the end of this episode that she actually apologized to her. I mean, maybe she did. I can't really recall it, but I don't recall her actually just saying, you know what, Shanice, I shouldn't have said what I said. 
Um, it was a halfway apology, I guess. She was just like, well, you know, you got the best body here. <laughs> but I'm like, that doesn't take away from how you feel like she's dressing. And the fact that you know what she's going through. You didn't take none of that account when you made the when you made the comment. So it's just like you need to stand in that moment right there. Take account for how you made your friend feel and then move forward from there. Shanice, you need to actually address your friend. All of y'all keep being passive aggressive and just covering the sweeping the stuff under the rug and don't really want to say how it makes you feel. But you tell everybody else, your mama, your cousin, your dog, you telling everybody else but that person. So that person is going to continue to treat you the same way because they feel like it's okay. You never say anything to you. You actually have to teach people how to treat you. And that teaching comes when saying, you know what, when you did this, it made me feel some type of way. I will please, you can do that to anybody else you feel. But when it comes to me, please keep in regards that it's going to make me feel this type of way. And I might have this type of reaction. And if that person continues to do that, then they're not trying to be your friend anyway. Separate yourself. I don't know. To me, it was just a lot of conversations going around it in circles, but it wasn't never nothing directly to each other. Even at the end, when Summer and and uh, Jordan gets in, into it, Jordan walks away with Bree. She she makes her grand exit in this moment, and then he, you leave you leave not Summer but Jordan. Did I say Jordan or Summer? You uh, Jordan walks away with Bria, and then leaves Summer at the table to ask Preston, "Do I get loud? Do I am I wrong?" or whatnot. And I also do agree, since I'm going to talk about that real quick. Preston, here you go again. You want to just sit here. Yeah, you do get loud. Well, she's asking for a mediator. <laughs> she's actually asking for a mediator in this moment. Like, give both sides. Like, you do get loud, but also Jordan does too. Y'all kind of mirror each other. So this is what's going to happen each time y'all clash. But instead, it has to be summer to be like, oh, but what Jordan doesn't, nobody says anything. And it's actually true. Because Jordan jumps in and out of everybody's situation and nobody says anything to Jordan. I don't know. Any more thoughts? Well, I don't want to jump ahead in it because since you started talking about um, that situation with Jordan and Summer. Um, yeah, because that's the sec this is the second table, right? It's the second time the table's been spoken about, so... I think it's the second. I don't know if the did Jordan cut across on the first table. Who did she cut across, Jordan, last time? It was the Alex Summer issue about him not inviting, and she kind of just helped. She was on uh, Summer's side this time. Now she's going against Summer for Shanice. Okay. Yeah. No. Um. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to jump ahead. I, we haven't got there yet. So. Um. But yeah, I just, I just think to myself, if Summer, I just think to myself, if um. You know, I don't know. Maybe Jordan is going through it, you know, a little bit. You know, maybe maybe she's kind of losing her foot in a little bit because you know we see her going through her alopecia um, and her hair's falling out. So maybe maybe she's going through it right now. Do you know what I mean? Maybe I, that's the kind of grace I can give her and say, look, hey babe, maybe you're going through it. You know what I mean? Like, and that you know things are starting to irritate you a little bit. You know, because life is, you know, life is is hard right now. You know, because you're losing your hair. So maybe that's also a part of the reason why some of these kind of conversations are happening the way it's happening for her. So yeah, we'll, we'll jump to some in a bit, but yeah. I just, want to say. I just want to put this out to the next time we have a house. Oh, you're going to say something on this though, Sean, but I'm because I was going to go into the next set way. So go ahead before I say. Yeah, no, Um, I want to give Jordan some grace too over the alopecia, but you know, she's just had a nasty attitude from even, I mean, I know this is not alopecia isn't necessarily new, I think she's experienced an, uh, you know, kind of like an outbreak uh, most recently and it's caused her hair to, you know, caused her to lose more significant of her hair, significant portion of her hair. So maybe that's affecting her personality a little bit. But she was rude season one. You know, she was rude. I mentioned it before. She was on Winter House. I think she's one of those girls that just kind of like. She's a pretty girl, <clears throat> but got a nasty attitude. Pretty girl, ugly attitude. And that's just unfortunate. Now, could it change? Are there probably nicer parts to her? Yeah. But overall, she's on she's just kind of annoying, <laughs> you know? And I think, 
she can't self-reflect to see like, hey, maybe my personality is part of the problem as to why I'm bumping into all these things with friends, why I'm not having the relationship satisfaction I want. Um, you know, I think that she has to take a good look in, in the mirror because she's she doesn't come off as the nicest person. All right, we're going to move it along a little bit. And so this is what I want to say. Next time we get our house together, I want to have one of these phone pool parties, like the neon pool party, okay? So if we Airbnb anything on another trip, we got an Airbnb with a pool. <laughs> and I want, the put, I want the neon phone pool party. All right, y'all get down? Y'all down? We're going to talk about it later. I'll see y'all. I'll my Bible. Mm. At the pool? At the window at the very top. <laughs> I can't swim. I don't want to fall in. <laughs> All right, you gonna join us in the in the slip and slide race at least? Uh, the only thing I'm slipping and sliding on it. No, that, whoa, pause. <laughs> whoa, you gonna slip and slide back out of the Bible that quick? Man. <laughs> Got him. Oh. <laughs> You know what? I couldn't think of a fast enough comeback. So it just, I, just, I was like, "Whoa!" And I said, "That's." It doesn't sound good. Get him! Get him. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Sean. We're gonna move on. Right? We're gonna move on. Okay, but nonetheless, nonetheless, <laughs> at this pool party, uh, Shanice's new friends Hendrix comes through him, and it looked like somebody else, but obviously the other person wasn't important enough. But they come through, and Noel. Noel takes a liking to Hendrix. What y'all, what y'all think between between that and and Alex secretly being mad at least by what we've seen through the editing. So Noel better stay there, <laughs> as we saw. <laughs> Noel better stay there. I mean, she she trying to make a play. <laughs> Old girl's heart got broke. I was, old girl was. <laughs> I was like, but anyway, that's going ahead of myself. But um, yeah, listen, look, you know, Hendrix looks like a really decent kind of guy. You know, she's rubbing up upon his chest and having a bit of fun. And, you know, he seems like a cool guy. I mean, I think she should potentially, you know what? I think Noel, you know, she plays chess. She just needed to up her game a little bit, just a little bit. You know what I mean? Like, how you gonna let them, how you gonna let them push you into telling the old boy that you fancy him? Like, that's the first mistake right there. Why, why would you do that? You know what I mean? But anyway, back to Hendrix. I mean, listen, you had a great opportunity to play a little bit of chess. I, I really was rooting for Noelle. And then I realized, nah, she's she 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 plays a chess but doesn't know how to play chess. You know what I'm saying to you? You know what I mean? She's an she's a beginner, amateur, you know what I mean? So, you know, I was I was rooting for her. Um because she had Hendrix, you know, entertained. I don't know how interested he was actually into a situation because he didn't actually really give anything like back. If you really deep it. She's rubbing up on his chest, and I ain't never seen a brother so unin, unin, you know, uh, I'm not, let me not say uninterested, but there was a lack of reflex. You know what I'm saying to you? Old girl's rubbing up the 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 pool thing on your chest. You ain't moving. You ain't you ain't you ain't you ain't, you ain't even looking at her properly. You know what I mean? But maybe he was a little bit nervous. He was smiling maybe because she's rubbing up her chest. But I'm just saying, you gonna rub up on my chest like that? Bible or no Bible, at that point, temptation has come, okay? And it's only the good Lord that's going to give me the strength to get out of that situation. He said, I can't, he won't give me anything I can't handle. He knows I can't handle that. So listen, I'm going to be looking at you. I'm going to see you. I'm gonna, you know what I mean? Some kind of response back to that. So that for me, kind of like, yeah, that was, um, you know, she should have just kept it coy a little bit more. Just a little bit more. Not just, it was still early days. You know what I'm saying to you? And the power of a woman is not in her telling us, it's in her showing, but then not actually necessarily saying, and then getting the brother to move. That would have been, you know, her thing, uh, you know, but unfortunately she just kind of, she fell into the trap, man. She had it good. Two, she had two men that could have been playing with, and instead she got suckered in. Poor girl, man. Poor, poor girl. She going to join someone on that little line. Uh -huh. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, I'm 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 not sure. You know, I I I like Noel. You know, I do like her, but she just has to. You know, she just she can't wear all her her cards on her sleeve. 
And um, she had mentioned that the old dude, um, what's his, Hendrix, uh, who was Shanice's friend, she had said, like, that it seems like he wanted her to chase him a little bit more. And usually that means one of two things. He's not really interested or, you know, maybe he's a little more on the shy type. But they kissed. Technically, I guess they kissed because they shared whatever whatever they were eating, whatever that was. I don't really remember what it was. But they, you know, had a semi kind of flirty moment where they, you know, were in intimate space with each other. But I guess he was like, all right, it was what it was. So either he's not interested at all um, or he's just really, really shy. It's one or the other. Yeah, I'm kind of like uh, with Coach, just keep your options open. Even if Hendrix is not that interested in you, just don't lock in. This is barely day three, day four. Don't lock in on Alex, especially if you already say you ain't trying to do nobody sloppy seconds. Just, I'm pretty sure being that Hendrix is there means that there is a lot more people in the atmosphere that you could potentially find out there. Just have a hot girl summer. You're single. You just got out of something. Just enjoy being single. And, and you know, if you want to enjoy the little flirt with Alex because you in the house with him, enjoy that. Just enjoy. But, you know, yeah, I, I, that move that she did at the end, I, yeah, too soon. Too soon, sis. Too soon. And then the other thing that she did, which was like, mm, I mean, she was nice at first, but then she should have read the room. When she brought him that um, tofu, and he was like, you know, not so. He was like, oh, you know, it's nice. I appreciate the effort. I think he's just a dry person in general. But really, his energy read like, you know, if he really liked her, he'd be like, oh, yeah, yeah. You know what, baby girl? I don't really like tofu. But because you got it, <laughs> I'm going to try it. You know, like it would have just been a little bit more energy because somebody thought about you. And she wasn't. And then. You know, her friend Summer being the mean. Oh, Summer is so mean. She always used an opportunity and she was like, oh, duh. <laughs> you know, that was cringy. And she was like, that's why I wanted to pass him to you. So you you think he's not a nice person. So you want her to you. That's why you want your friend, somebody that you call a friend or you're friendly with to date, date the same person. Yeah, I didn't like that at all. I thought that was really, really rude, mean and shady. Well, I mean, before then, though, at the after the pool, before they went to the club, they were back to they flirting like they were before Hendrix showed up. So it, it's been a tug of war between these two. And yes, he was a bit rude. He didn't really say thank you. At least what we seen on camera, he could have or could not. But it was just he still said it was a nice gesture. So, and he ate it. Let's, let's be honest. He did eat it. He just be like, oh, I don't eat too, tofu at all. and throw it in the trash. Elise attempted this like she did her best that she could. She don't know what I eat. <laughs> she thought about me. And I mean, it was really that that thing is the thought, the gesture of it all. And, you know, that set Summer the hell off. That really set Summer off. She wasn't worried about how he responded to it. She actually liked the fact that he responded the way he did to it. Let's be honest. She just didn't like the fact that Summer got him something to eat in the first. I mean, Noel got him something to eat in the first place. So... It's like, girl, let's. I need you, Summer, to be honest about how you actually feel about Alex. You do not want to pass the, that man off to that girl. You only passing him off because he passed on you. You didn't dismiss him. We we gonna have to be all the way honest. You did not dismiss him. Had you dismissed him, it'd be a different story. But. It's sounding a lot like he had the hand of no longer contacting you and pushing away from you. And it wasn't mutual. So I I don't know. I, I just, I don't know. Noelle's a very beautiful girl, but not the brightest crayon in the box. I just need her to like really pay attention to what's going on in the room. It's okay to continue to flirt with Alex, be nice to Alex or whatnot, but really pursue him. Just sit back and watch because you already have a firsthand insight on how he potentially moves with people, especially not if he's not that into you. 
So if you really want him to be something different, you got you do have to go into a little bit of dark arts. I am so sorry. With that kind of guy, you do have to go into a little dark arts because he went into a whole lot of dark arts with you. He's seen how you move with Hendrix. And he was like, oh, okay. This, <laughs> I'm about to show you what we about to do. And unfortunately for her, Amir set her right up, do that car conversation. And then Summer set her up again at that last conversation. Like, you just need to tell him how you really feel. Well, how did that work for you, Summer? <laughs> How did that work out for you? <laughs> Telling them how you really feel. Stop taking advice for free people that's not really your friends. That's all I'm going to say. Stop taking advice for people that's not really your friends. Anyways. Um, other situation that happened. I mean, I guess since we there with Alex and that whole situation and Noel, let's talk about what happened at the end at the club while he was running around flirting and then got his lick back. Y'all have any thoughts on how Noel played herself? Did she play herself? Did was it was it summer set up? Was it a mayor set up? What was the situation? I mean, listen, look, let's be honest. Um it's sad to see her go out like that. <laughs> I mean, it was so sad to see. Her. Wait, sorry, I'm jumping ahead. Are we talking about Noel and being set up? Just want to make sure. So, you know, I don't want to jump ahead myself. It was very sad to see her go out like that. Um, old girl looked broken. Um, you know, the rejection really cut deep. Um, you know, I'm not one to laugh at anybody's pain like that, but it was it was it was painful, but it was also funny at the same time. Uh, did I think they set her up? Of course they did, but at the same time she set herself up. Because baby, you walked into this game without being cautious. I'm not saying that things can't change. I'm not saying that Alex couldn't have been the guy that you wanted to go for, but I'm saying obviously we must have missed something because where did you where did you miss the the turn? Because you were rubbing on someone's chest in front of him at the phone party. So where did you think that this was gonna send a good signal to the person? Be like, yeah, I like you, and I only want you. Like that person also, and this is Alex who who, who played your girl. So at this point, you should have been more cautious. And then I realized, no, Noelle's not a game player. She's a lover girl who's got the cover of somebody who plays games because the the speed of how she fell into a trap without bringing someone up. Listen, if if I'm falling, in, you have to fall in too. That that if I'm going in, I'm dragging you. Out, I'm dragging you in too. Like like I I always say this is if you got me. I've actually, I've actually got you. you th and that's how my mindset is. I just, I, if I'm getting played, we all getting played because I'm going to have a trump card in my pocket. And the fact that she sat there in that moment and said, yo, you know, I'm kind of feel, you know, I'm kind of liking you. I don't know if you actually know. First one thing is, how do you think he didn't know? Number two, he then said with all chest. Yeah. You already kind of told me already. I said, so you've already, you've already told him before already. So why are we doing this again? Why, why are we here having this conversation again? Which means Noelle is not the chess player that we thought she was, right? That she might enjoy chess, but doesn't play chess. And therefore she is a lover girl, a really deep lover girl, all right? Who's a really fun, bubbly, I think she'll be great for somebody who really will love her and care for her, but she's only had one relationship. And you know, I'm not saying that's even bad, but I'm saying like, clearly you're, you, you're a lover girl. You know what I'm saying? She, you wanna be loved and that's okay. But you went into that situation a little bit naive, baby. This is a dark artist standing right in front of you, who not only was not only was in front of you, but was actually here in the club picking up other gal while you were there too. So at that point, sis, guard your heart. You know what I'm saying to you? At that point, guard your heart and plan for his downfall. Don't don't, don't plan your own downfall. I mean, yeah, she was pushed along in the end um, by the other ladies. Uh, by well, by summer. Sorry, I probably should say. Um, and someone just shows us she's a bad friend. Um, someone's a bad friend. You know what I mean? Like pushed Noelle towards it. Um, you know, then didn't tell her how she really felt about Alex. And then kind of like just at towards the end pushed her even more to go and, oh, tell him your feelings. Why would you tell her that? Now, of course, in the toilet, they did say he's an F boy. So to be fair, I, I don't know who was in the toilet with her, but they did, they did, they did warn Noelle he was an F boy. So... If she didn't heed that warning, so not, not, everybody, not everybody can be saved. That's what I'm gonna say. So poor Noel, I did feel for her. Um, she looked so sad taking that loss and that rejection. She almost, it's like another rejection it felt like. And I was just like, oh, Noel, I mean, next time choose better. Okay, don't choose the F boy in the house, all right?
Yeah, um, I, I just think Summer should go with her, not Summer, uh, Noelle should go with her first instinct. Her first instinct was to leave Alex alone because he was tied to Summer. Don't veer off. You know, and I think sometimes we we we've all probably been at this place where you know we saw somebody and then we was like, mm, I really probably shouldn't, and then we just somehow along navigate our way and it just doesn't work out. And it's not to say that Alex might not give her a chance, but I don't think it's going to work out well for her. And I think for all the reasons, primarily because she knows Summer, and it, she should just leave Alex alone. Don't even go down that path. And also for me, Alex is the person, he seems like you, you can't, maybe he's an avoidant person because if you give him too much energy, he pulls back. If you give him a little bit, he'll kind of like come and meet you halfway. Um, but I think he also needs to sit back and observe. And in that moment, Noel just applied way too much pressure to sit him down and say, you know, I kind of did my thing. And now you want to re go over the events that happened the day before. And listen, I know how I am. Some guys don't care. But if I see you kind of messing with a guy and I know I might like you, I want to put that out of my head because obviously I know we're not together. But if I like you, I don't need you to readdress it. We both know we're single. Just, you know, if you want to be flirty, come and be flirty, you know, something like that. But don't remind me, you know, don't remind me and tell me, oh, I know I'm single. I know you single. I did my thing with so-and-so yesterday. You, you can have fun with your, you know, your girls today. I'm like, yeah, yeah, we don't we don't need to create ground rules like this. And plus, it's too early on. We haven't even established if we're going to do anything. So just fall back a little. Take it easy. But ultimately, take that advice for a whole different person because she should just really leave Alex alone. I say so a few things Noelle did wrong. One, you betrayed your first mind. You say you don't want nobody's leftovers. You know, especially somebody that you know. Leave it alone. Secondly, you got at this table and you let these people talk you up. First, you're listening to Amir talking about you want to find out if it's chemistry. Actually, Amir did, did you a favor. He said he want to find out if there's chemistry there. Well, therefore, organically, we need to see if it's, I mean, not just chemistry, but compatibility there. Okay, that means we and him need to have more conversations if that, I want to make something serious about this. So that means I need to take my time, have some conversations with this man, not pursue him overtly sexually or anything like that. We need to just actually see if we actually really, truly vibe. Let me sit back and read this man. Okay. Summer, the girl told you, go ahead and pursue this man without telling you that she slept with this man. You know, you cannot trust her and any information that she gives you. <laughs> to tell you to go ahead and tell this man any kind of truth or anything. Just listen to what your heart is telling you and just sit back and relax because you got to remind yourself, like Sean said, I was just acting a whole fool <laughs> doing me. I was being single yesterday. And here's the thing. When you sit there and tell a man, hey, I, I listen, I want you to be single. I want you to be free. I want you to do what you got to do. But I also want you to keep me in the back thoughts. Well, now it sounds like we in a relationship, kind of. Why am I keeping you in the back thought if I'm single? If I don't naturally put you there, then I, I don't naturally value you in that way right now. So let's just be single. Let's just enjoy the summer. Let's see where it go. And if anything, be his sneaky link. Like y'all in the same house together. It ain't hard to go ahead and have him creep up to your room or whatever the case may be. Just keep the flirt going. The flirt is actually better than the overall outcome because you know the overall outcome going to be like you see it through summer right now. He got the goods and he backed off because something was lacking. You need to invest a bit more into this person to find out who he is like he does y'all because he actually sits back, pay attention to y'all. And if decides how he going to maneuver his way in and maneuver his way back out. So your best intentions was to keep the little flirt going if that's what you want to do and you want a little attention while you're in the house until you find something else during the summer. Go ahead, find out more about him. Find out if you even really want to deal with him. You might not even really want to deal with him. Instead of having this man sit here and tell you, you know what, I see you, but I, <laughs> to be honest with you, you a little too close to summer and I don't want them problems. 
why he needed to tell you that? <laughs> why you couldn't tell yourself that, you know what, Summer is my girl, even though I just met her. She's, she was messing with my roommate. I just met her. But you know what? She the one who brought me out here. Let me just chill out. I just found out that y'all was messing around. I'm going to back off. I'm going to back off. But you openly doing stuff and you already know how he feels about public display of anything. Child, he took a secret picture and it was it was a problem. OK, he really didn't want the business between him and Summer being out there. That was a problem. So you got to look at all of these things instead of putting your face face down in crab legs and all this stuff and not paying attention to what's going on in the room. I need her to actually see what's going on around her and be more aware because she's think she's a her she's sinking her own ship at this point right now like and it's very sad to watch because i very I, I think she's a very beautiful girl i don't think she is like dumb or anything like that but when it comes to social cues and what the heart wants she's going with what the heart wants instead of actually paying attention to what the logic and reason is around the room any other thoughts on them me for no. All right. Um, but yeah, we'll see how this goes. I don't know. Uh, what else are we getting into? Basically, they have the house meeting. They have a house meeting about bringing some people back. Let's get into that. Okay. Um, so there was two house meetings, <laughs> so to speak. Okay, one one small one, and then it was a big one. So Jordan already knows she bringing Mariah back, and I guess be in this little mini meeting that she has with uh, who she have it with Jordan and not Jordan. Jasmine knew she was bringing Mariah back, but in this meeting meeting she had Jordan and was it Summer? I think it was Summer. Had to be summer because I know it's not Shanice and Bria, so I'm assuming it was summer. She tells them that she's bring she plans on bringing Mariah back in and how they feel about Phil. And of course, as soon as they mention Phil's name, Jordan's up in arms. She don't want him back or whatnot. We get into the meeting and majority of the people there had a problem with Phil, so majority of them don't want them him back. But only one person only has a problem with Mariah, which is Bria. I don't know how y'all feel, but is it fair to omit one person for one person? I can get it more so when it's multiple people saying they don't want a person back, but they, let's rewind a little bit. They also voted Mariah out without her being there of the house, without her being there. And they kind of voted her out for Bria. So is it actually fair that Mariah doesn't get her second shot to come back and make amends, especially when Amir was a problem? Amir was a problem. Well, I mean, I guess I see it a little differently. I mean, I know Bria is a pain in the neck. So, but what happened with them went a little on the physical side. So I think no matter what, you if 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 some if some if one of my friends had an altercation where they almost had a physical fight. And at the end of the day, I would, I don't care. It wouldn't need to be multiple people, you know, like if it went down that way and then we voted to, for that person to leave, um, there's really no uh, unsettling part that, you know, they haven't been, you know, any, any kind of resolve to that. I think I, I would, I would, I would definitely consider her opinion. And yes, as much as Amir uh, started it, Mariah is responsible for how she reacted. So Amir might have been the one that did the laundry. He didn't say anything, which he's definitely owes something for that. At the end of the day, it's Mariah's problem for how she reacted and handled the situation. So she's responsible for herself, regardless of who started what, who said what. So I would feel some type of way if I almost got into a physical altercation with somebody, or I think she pushed her, whatever it was, they almost got to tussling. Um, so if it happened, I don't know that I would feel comfortable with that person being in my living space. Hey, I didn't even know about what happened in the past. I didn't know there was a physical altercation per se, but um, I mean, just even without knowing that information, for me, it's about principle, right? So, you know, um, I don't know what their rules are in terms of obviously, 
um, in terms of the voting system. What I do know is, um, is that that situation between the Mariah and uh, Phil situation was clearly um, a thing of principle, right? Because if Jasmine, if Jasmine decides that she really booked a ticket, which means she already had in her plans that this was going to be the girls going to come to the place anyway. Um, one could say that she probably knew that the people wouldn't be so messed up about it. But um, I think personally, again, if they're going to be so afraid of someone taking a doo doo in the toilet and having a few a few spats here and there, I think I think you're going to be okay with. I think you're going to be. I think I think you're going to be uh, looking at not bringing Mariah there too, right? Because clearly, obviously, there's there was some kind of big issue with Bree. Um, uh, as well I don't know I just I think even if I didn't know the information when I watched it it almost felt like I don't want to say a gang up because that would be it's almost as if whatever happened to Bree was much less than what Phil did so clearly clearly Phil obviously pissed off everybody so like he definitely annoyed some people right but from my perspective I hadn't watched what behind beforehand it just felt like everybody wanted to 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 gang up on the Phil stream like yeah he ain't coming for sure like they 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 made it in the mind straight away and I I, I kind of felt a little bit bad for Bree a little bit in some sense um, just the way that it actually went down um, but again it depends on the rules if the if the majority rules then you know I I get why Bree might be pissed off but the majority rules the cheekiness though is Jasmine buying a ticket before it's time she had no she had you know what I mean it, it's it's just a little bit of a slap in the face. Um, you know, so yeah, I, I know. And someone said, yes, Phil was, I think they showed a little run back of him saying something about Preston too. So yeah, I don't know. It's a bit, for me, it's just a little bit, I think it's principle personally. That's what it is. Uh, I feel like, you know, there's a few people that was in the altercation with Bria and Bria is part of that and her mouth is part of that. And yes, yes, just because somebody pops off at the mouth you don't have to put their hands on it. But when people keep telling you what you're going to do, bring it, bring it, bring it. Some people going to bring it. Now, was it a big old altercation? It wasn't a Candace and Monique situation. Nothing to that magnitude or whatever. However, boundaries was crossed or whatever and stuff. But you have her right now campaigning to bring Phil back. But you want you don't want Mariah back. So how are you gonna be campaigning to have Phil back if you don't want Mar Mariah back? Now I can uh, I can go with this thing. Well, y'all don't want Phil back, so I don't want Mariah back. So neither one of them come back. That's fine. I can go with that. But you're really standing by this whole thing. I don't see why he's a problem. He's not even gonna stay here. He's just gonna come by this thing. So okay, then why Mariah can't come back? Because you're one person compared to multiple people having to literally go there with him. You have Jordan that have got into it with him. You got Amir that had got into it with him. He pooped in um, Nick's toilet. And Preston just don't have, like the vibe he gets from him. So it's like, okay. I mean, you could have plea bargain right there. If y'all bring Mariah back, then Phil can come by the house one time. Or he can come to an event one time. And that could have been your deal. <laughs> like, hey, if Mariah comes, Phil get to come by one time. If y'all sit there and let her come, y'all can't tell me Phil can't show up. The kid, the gag is Phil is going to show up to places because Mariah is going to let him know. That's what that's the what Bria is basically saying at the table. Like, it wasn't going to be me or Shanice bringing him and inviting him to the place places. Him and Mariah has a rapport, and so from that report, he was going to be showing up at places that we were going to be at. Because clearly he knows that Mariah is going to show up and her ticket is already bought. So it's like, Jordan, why did we have, I mean, not Jordan, Jasmine, why did we even have this this meeting when you already pre-planned the fact that Mariah was going to be here? We didn't need to have this meeting. So was the meeting to sit here and have people vote for Phil to come and be around? Well, you kind of already know that answer. And you already knew the answer that Brie was going to have a problem with it. So it's kind of like I need you to take a little bit of accountability, Jasmine, that you were pre-planning for her to be there. Now, the thing is with Phil, he was already in town. He's already there. They just wanted him to be able to be a part of some events 
that they were going to have going forth. It's not like he's there and he's staying with them. He's there already in town, staying with somebody else, wherever else he's staying. So I don't, I'm just like, you know, I'm on the side of the fence where it's almost to the point. If you keep you in altercations and people, you people got problem with your mouth, you shouldn't be here either, Bria. In a way. Because I if it's one of y'all, y'all get into it with somebody else in the house or whatever, I'm gonna be like, well, I'm not gonna not invite Sean to my thing because Sean got into it with one of y'all and he's only a problem for you. Don't be around when my friend is around. My friend knows how to control itself if you know how to control yourself. Or I'm going to go, all right, that's cool. I'm going where my friend is because I want to hang out with my friends too. Point blank, period. But if Sean or y- or Koja, y'all offended a bunch of people, then respectfully, I got to I gotta respect the masses. I'm just going to have to hang out with y'all outside this house. <laughs> that's how I look at it. But, you know, we know sometimes you can bring that one friend around and then next day and know it is a whole Candace and the Bora situation at the end. Bottles are being thrown and stuff. So you just you you kind of got to know your friend. If your friend is really a person that is not about fighting or whatever, and they just had a moment with somebody, then maybe. But I don't agree with Jasmine also bringing her to the house to stay. You know Bria has a problem. Don't bring her to stay at the house. Just like they wanted to bring Frail for an event, she can show up for an event or two herself too. Yeah, I think that would have been a better compromise to the situation. I mean, although I think Bria accepted it at first, but then threw a tantrum because she, you know, she kind of felt ganged up on, which I can understand. Uh, I think Jasmine just flexed without saying it because we know unofficially the show the, sh- the show is centered around her and si- si- Silas right so they are the 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 main people that the show is centered around and then everybody else is kind of added along um as part of their friend group so i think she flexed without kind of thinking about we all live here yeah you might have a certain amount of you know power or however we say it but ultimately you still should be inclusive of everybody feeling comfortable. And I think, listen, Preston said, you know, he felt unsafe and uncomfortable. Meanwhile, Phil didn't really say anything directly to him about his sexuality, but he felt that that was kind of like implied. So I think we, we got to, if we're going to rest on the things that other people say are making Phil uncomfortable, um, then I think we got to also give Bria that same room for whatever reason. Now, she could have, she shouldn't have. I, I'm just really, really guarded about people's personal safety. And I feel like if you're going to put somebody in my path, that's going to be a physical threat to me. I'm just not comfortable with that, which is why I'm very, very conscious about who I go on vacations with, who I'm around. And it's not like I had some big issue ever. I just don't want my security to be in you know, in jeopardy. So I understand her feeling some type of way because you, people are unpredictable. And if somebody's unpredictable and they've already proven themselves to not react well to my personality, I don't necessarily want to be in that person's space. Um, might I be able to tolerate if they visit? Sure. Because then I can um, I can remove myself very quickly if I don't want to be there, right? If you're like, oh, they're going to be here for this day. Fine. Y'all want to hang out with her? Cool. This day, I'm going to be somewhere else. You know what I mean? So I think they just needed to be more clear and be more sensitive to what happened before just pushing her in like, hey, this is what's happening. You know, we're going to ask you, but we already did it. Yeah, but I also don't think you'll be double double talking on that stance either, though, Sean. Like, if you want to bring somebody that we don't agree with and then we'd want to bring somebody you don't agree with, you wouldn't be sitting here like, well, I should still be able to bring my person, even though I don't want you to bring your person, you know? And that's a little bit what the problem with Bria is, is I don't understand why I feel y'all got a problem with Phil, but then y'all don't understand why I got a problem with Mariah. Well, if, let's just talk it up as neutral then. Cause neither one of y'all understand, but okay, well, neither one of them should come. <laughs> Not for no long period of time. You know, if, if 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 y'all agree to my friend coming through 
to a few events, I agree Mariah can come to a few events. Otherwise, if we can't come to that compromise, nobody gets nobody. And it's just it. It's us for the summer. And that's generally what the compromise will be between us. I know for sure. But I didn't understand how they couldn't get to that compromise instead of just blowing up at tables, getting trying to call people each other out and storming off. And just instead of saying, hey, listen, I know y'all don't want feel around for everything. One, maybe two events. Cool. I feel the same way about Mariah. Is it? If that's doable, I'm okay. I'm okay with her coming. But y'all, Jasmine wants Bria to agree with Mariah literally living with her and potentially having the same situation because Milo's still there. <laughs> Milo ain't going nowhere. So you had a problem with all his hair the last time. He not going nowhere. His hair going to be everywhere this time. So we potentially going to be right back where we started. Just put her in a room, a hotel somewhere. Have her come into an event. And then she can go after that. And you can go with her if you want to. I don't know. Any other thoughts on this whole situation? Yeah, I would be annoyed about Milo. <laughs> <laughs> Truth be told, no dog running around with hair. And it's a little dog. You constantly have to be conscious of it. You got to watch can't... where you're going. You can't leave the door open because the dog might run out. Yeah, I think she needs to. I know that's her emotional support dog. And I'm glad everybody worked it out. But I think Bria also shouldn't be pushing any fill issues because she got a lot to her. You know, she needs to be conscious like you got a lot to you, baby girl. So just just be easy um, and don't be trying to push other people where it's not comfortable and leveraging it. If you're really upset about the Mariah thing, then speak on it. If you feel isolated, speak on it. If you want to compromise, speak on it. But the temper tantrums, let's learn how to communicate. You know, everything, you don't have to rush up and storm out the room and, you know, it's too much drama. My bad. My multitasking skills be off sometimes. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> uh, so I guess that's about it for that situation. Um, oh, wait. And oh. somebody just reminded me too. And we want to talk about people getting in people's faces. Jordan got up in Phil's face. Bring it. What was that about? <laughs> like... <laughs> and you what's, what's wrong with you you know and and again i'm not saying he's right he definitely was super problematic i'm telling you right now if phil had done anything like what he did last year and in my presence it would be a no bueno i don't want to ever see him in life like i'm good like for me like when you show me your character like that when you are just a problematic person I don't care if you've changed, you've got therapy, you found Jesus. I don't want to be around you. But Jordan also has to be accountable because she's always doing things. And she got up. They were arguing. OK, they had a difference of opinion and she wants to buck up. And she got in his face and was like, bring it. So what were you going to do? Like you were prepared to fight him? Like what was what was that about? Like and that just kind of was a trickle effect, too of all the other fights that happened because now you put the guys in a predicament because, you know, Amir, Amir jumped in. in. Alex was kind of on the, you know, he was kind of quieter. Um, but it was like, I think Jordan's energy needs to be checked as well. Mm -hmm. Definitely needs to be checked. But, you know, like Summer says at the end, nobody says nothing to Jordan. They just let Jordan do whatever. And it is what it is. Um, before we get into that summer and thing, we get a moment with Jordan and she's very tearful about the wig that she was, I think she was trying to pre-pluck the wig because she came into somebody's room earlier and she was trying to pre-pluck it to get it right. And she's just having a breakdown moment. You know, listen, I'm going to say this. I do not doubt this is playing into some of her attitude, but I don't think this is all of her attitude. I think her attitude is naturally kind of on a mean girl side. But I also do, um, I do see people that go through different things where they have ha hair loss. I've watched a friend go through chemo. Actually, she was a lot nicer when she was going through the chemo. When she got out of it, she got mean again. But <laughs> people act differently than themselves when they're going through different changes. 
it's still no excuse to be like lashing out and acting like this to people you call your friend, especially when they're not aware of your changes. Um, but it was very sad to see that she's going through this because I've told y'all before, hair is our crown. It's different when we choose to cut it off we and, and do this stuff. But when you're seemingly just losing it and there's nothing you could do about it, that's a very difficult place to be in. And who really wants to wear wigs all summer long when we trying to have a good time? We want to get in the water. We want to do all this thing. Now I got to be super conscious of how this thing is sitting on my head. And child, y'all be seeing me with mine. We don't have many lives with mine on. Most of the time I don't care, but them times I want to play it off like it's mine. <laughs> It'd be embarrassing when it be sitting up here. <laughs> So I was just like, oh, I feel for her. I feel for her. I hope that this wig deal that she does have work out overall and it gives her some of her confidence back and maybe she can start being nicer again. I don't know. I don't know what y'all think on it. Y'all got any thoughts on her having this breakdown moment? I mean, listen, like I said, I think we said everyone is Pete is political for um you know, for Jordan, you know, I, I don't wish that on anybody. Do you know what I'm saying to you? So I definitely feel like she is going through it, man. And shout out to, to you know, Summer for being there um, and supporting her, even though later on she gets cussed out. Um, but, you know, um, yeah, no, it's tough, man. I don't, you know, it's tough for her to be in that space. And um, I wouldn't want anybody to be in that. I wouldn't want anybody to be going through that. It's hard to enjoy yourself, you know what I'm saying? Because you've got that thing, you've got, you've, got, you've got that thing that you know in the back of your mind is, you know, it's not so well. And so, um, yeah, man, it's tough. And obviously they're going to show it next week, she's going to share it with the group, which I think might give a bit more light and make people understand a bit more, maybe help her relax a little bit more too. If it don't, she's then she's got a stinking attitude and uh, she needs to fix that. I ain't going to do the hair. That's all to do what's within you, baby. And that needs to come right out. Okay, all right, so... It needs you to de-stress um, and look at things differently. So, yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't want anyone to go through that at all. <clears throat> yeah, no, I, I definitely feel bad, you know. I, I, I can't imagine, you know, uh, how that impacts her self-confidence. So I, I definitely give her some grace on it. But I think she just also needs to check her attitude and be open to see how others perceive her because she was going, you know, tete a tete with summer. She's about to, you know, they tussling and fussling, you know, at the dinner table. So I think her attitude um, needs to be examined and how she talks. And everybody said it uh, at the table that she got it. She has an attitude. And I think her and summer, bump against each other because summer's got a got a little bit of an attitude a little bit of bad attitude too so they're they 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 kind of react and become a mirror off of each other um but since we're really on on jordan i would say that jordan needs to self-evaluate and also look at um the fact that just because you're going through something, it doesn't give you a license to be mean. It doesn't mean you can be rude to people because you might be dealing with something that has an, an effect on you. Uh, and you have to be open to that, right? You know, listen, I, I dealt with a life altering, uh, you know, sickness last year, uh, but it didn't make, it didn't give me the, the, the license to, to be rude to my friends you know, to be nasty and to, to be, you know, just, just, just selfish. You, you have to check yourself. And, 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 and it's one thing if you're just like, you want to be to yourself or you're kind of like not talkative, but that's not what Jordan does. She lashes out. So it's not like she's just being introverted or maybe somebody's trying to talk to you and you just want a little space because you're processing. No, you're actually mean. <laughs> so you're like mean, unprovoked. <laughs> you're nasty, unprovoked. <clears throat> you're sharp with people and if that's how you react when things don't go your way in life you need to check that because there's going to be lots more examples god willing it's not an illness but there's going to be other times when things don't work well in your life that doesn't mean you just get to be rude and mean to people because you're not feeling good about things and the way they are happening for you i'm glad you said that sean because that was going to be my point is everybody's going through some something let's just 
like if we just go down the list of these people on this cast, you know, pretty much almost all of them are going through something with the exception of a few because we we don't be into their personal life that much like Alex. But you got some are dealing with the situation of Alex. You have Preston dealing with his father's issues. You have Jasmine basically not with her husband and seemingly pregnant because the editing keeps wanting to show us how she's not drinking any alcohol, though she told us that she's not drinking no alcohol. <laughs> so we know she is pregnant for sure because she had the baby. You have uh, Jordan with her hair issue. You have Shanice with her job loss and all that that she went through with the ex and everything. You know, um, not really sure what Bria is going through, but you know, she just going through with the fact that Mariah got to come home here. Everybody is going through something. We all are going through something. We live in an unperfect world. Unfortunately, that's just life. And you have to be mindful, though we're the star in our story, there's other people's stories going on around us as well. And when, sometimes when we want people to be more aware and conscious of us, they're really not because they got things going on in their life. But it doesn't make you or give you a pass to be nasty in theirs. Actually, when you have stuff going on in your life, you should actually want to be more understanding and and probably like a little bit more in tune and being in other people's lives. Because maybe sometimes when you're entwined with other people, what they got going on might help you with your situation. You know, sometimes you just need to tell people about what you have going on, because then that gives them the room to be more empathetic to you and may be more conscious of what you have going on before they say things and they do things, you know, of course, you're going to get those moments like summer with Shanice, you know, what's going on, but you still don't care. But that also tells you, I don't need to be around this person anymore, especially while I'm going through my own ish. You know, things are put in our place to make sure that we still find peace in our lives some way and somehow. And if you're going through things, that's really what you want anyway, is you want the peace. So why be drama in other people's world when you are trying to get peace in yours? And that's what I just put out there, you know, just if you're going through something and it has nothing to do directly with that person you're dealing with, don't put that thing on them. They didn't cause it. They didn't do it to you. They might actually be able to help you but you're pushing them away when you do that. So I don't know. But since we are here with the last bit of tidbit before we get up out of here, which is basically summer and Jordan's conversation that stems from the dinner table all the way into the car. Um, How did y'all feel about that? Because uh, Jordan basically starts telling Summer how she interjected. I was confused. I was like, do I need to play this back? Because I, I was like, I thought it was about, <laughs> I really thought about Shadi, uh, Bria and Jasmine and it looked like you both interjected, really. But she interjected and somehow it became an issue between y'all two. And I didn't even really understand what was going on here. So we get to the end and she's telling Summer how she just likes to run away every time they have an issue and Summer decides that to come back and say, you know what, I'm not, I haven't been a good friend to you and whatever, whatever. And Jordan's like, yeah, here we go. And it cuts off. So what's your thoughts on these two? I mean, listen, look, um, people were obviously drinking after a night out. We know how it goes. Um, you know, I think, but I also think it's quite interesting because I think when, you know, people get drunk and say those things, they've been meaning to want to, they've been wanting to say it for a little while and it's just come out now. You know what I mean? It's let slip. Um, I think both of them just needed to get some things off their chest, to be honest, but it probably would have been better to have it when they're sober um, with that kind of confidence that they have when they're drunk. Um, but obviously clearly there's something up, you know what I mean? Um, Summer really felt some type of way. I find it quite interesting that she feels some type of way, how she feels is probably how Shanice feels in her situation. You know what I mean? Like you feel misheard, you feel misheard, you feel misjudged. You feel like, you know, someone's on your neck for no reason. And I thought we were cool, right? That's how your friend Shanice feels, right? So, you know, it, maybe that's something that, you know, someone needs to look at and kind of put herself a little bit in her shoes and be like, actually, you know what? Let me have an epiphany moment. Let me have a, <laughs> let me have a revelation that actually, you know what? 
you're just judging her by her tone and her and a couple of words that she's saying and you're not getting the same kind of treatment that she's getting that she's not getting that bless she you know jordan's getting away with certain things and you feel some type of way about it right so you know i just felt like that, that conversation yeah it was not going to be profitable it was going to always go left because once you're drinking nobody has sensible conversation when it's left um but yeah clearly there's deep deeper wounds and deeper issues with the both of them I, but like i said i, I think if 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 Jordan can come to some revelation understanding, she'll realise that actually that was a key moment for her to understand how Shanice, your friend, feels because literally all you're judging Jordan on and I'm not saying that you're wrong was based on her tone, the fact she interrupted and, you know, kind of said a little bit of the truth, which was a bit painful. Um, and sometimes we talk about impact versus intent. Sometimes we judge people by their intent when really we're hurt by the impact, you know what I mean? And we want to, we, we almost want to put the intent as being negative um, but in reality, you know, that intent might not have been as bad as we thought it was. Um, so yeah, she just needs to take some time and just think about it. I think she'll be okay, but that conversation needs to happen when it's sober. Yeah, no, I think that, um, <clears throat> the both of them, they, they both, uh, are very, uh, I don't know, like, I think Jordan's a little more passive aggressive uh, by nature, but then in conflict, she's a little more, um, you know, she's out, she's outspoken and summer, summer is similar. So I think they just need, they owe it to themselves to have a conversation because both of them kind of like trigger each other. So they need to sit down, kind of get to the root cause. Sometimes in friendships, it's like one thing that goes unaddressed kind of triggers multiple things. So I think they need to kind of figure out what is it that has us tussling and fighting like this? Is there something you said that I didn't like and then vice versa? So we can kind of get to the bottom of whatever their problem is. So they can stop having these kind of run-ins like this. Uh, so I th for me, I think probably Jordan might be feeling some way because Jordan seems a little, you know, you pointed it out, Coach, earlier. You know, she seems a little judgy. So she's probably seen several things that in her mind she doesn't like that Summer has done. So maybe she's not addressing them, but keeping like she's keeping a tab. You know, when somebody's keeping a tab of the things that you did and they're not really letting it go. So I think she's keeping a tab of all the things <laughs> funny, like at the bar. Right. <laughs> it's perfect for your channel. So she got she got they got a running tab and the tab just never gets settled. So, you know, Summer might be the customer. And Jordan's the bartender, but she's never really settled her tab. And Jordan's like, I like you, so you're going to keep coming. I'm going to still give you the free drink. But in my mind, I know you owe me $50. <laughs> you still ain't paid me. So I think whatever, if that's the case, they, she just needs to lay it, lay it on the line and stop having these little microaggressions and digs at her and just be like, yo, this is what it is. This bothers me when you do this. If they can work it out, great. Or if we can just not be friends, great. Well, I guess we got one last person that wants to give the the quick little two cents because we're real technically done. But <laughs> oh. oh no, it's okay. <laughs> I couldn't tell if y'all had just started or not. So. No, we're done. If you want to give your last two cents on the Jordan Summer thing, that's fine. That's where we're at. Um. Yeah, I this would be completely my opinion because I don't know what you guys said, but um. I'm just not a fan of Jordan this season. I wasn't a fan of her last season. Um, not a fan of Summer really either, but Jordan's just extremely passive aggressive and her personality has been quite frustrating to watch. I think these last three episodes, um, she just needs to be more direct with whatever her issues are. Um, and Summer has her problems too, but the way uh, Jordan goes about addressing things is just a little problematic. That's just my quick summary. All right, all right. I'll just say this. Stop trying to have serious conversations with drunk people or while you're drunk. Them is never going to go well. They never going to go well, okay? And and one thing, you don't never get the points that you really want off. It's, you barely get them off while you're sober because emotions jump in, but your emotions really be on high when you're drunk. And then we start saying all other things that wasn't intended to be said. And I know sometimes people like to say it's your, your, your truest thoughts 
come on a drunk mind. Sometimes they're not. Sometimes for me, I just be like, listen, I'm trying to enjoy being drunk and I want you to shut up. So I'm going to say whatever. <laughs> like, so don't talk to people while they drunk. Just wait till they sober and have this conversation. Just let it, let it chill for a minute. Y'all just got up from being hostile at a table. Just let it chill. Let it sit, sit in, sink in. And, you know, maybe Shanice, I mean, Summer would have realized how she is coming off to Shanice is the same way she feels you're coming off to her, but she's not going to see it right now. She's going to feel validated in the point of standing against you, Jordan, and still feel okay with what she did to Shanice. So have this moment when y'all just really sober in the morning, just, Hey, listen, last night didn't go so well. Can we talk? Some things transpired last night and I'm trying to figure out where you was coming from. I didn't understand. But you want to sit here. You're Look at you. Now you're running away. Now you're doing what you always do. Okay, so now you intensifying the situation on a drunk person. And you got an audience. Y'all been hanging all summer long. I don't understand why we got to keep having an audience when we talk to our friends and keep bringing other people into the situation. You know, I know it's a TV show, but y'all can still have the private conversation with the cameras alone. And then come back to the group and like, hey, we settled it. We had our conversation on sidebar. We decided it is what it is. But I, we know that these two is not real friends. They made up friends since uh, Jordan don't have Jasmine to hang out with no more. She needs somebody else. And guess what? It's summer. So here we are. Anyways. We're going to get up out of here now because um, we got to make our way over to members live at Kojo's channel. We, what time we got that going? It, oops. Oops. You didn't remember yeah, that. Yeah, I, remember. I, just, I literally just checked. It's in 15 minutes. <laughs> it's posted. I got a message saying it's coming up. I know. It just posted to me. I said, God have mercy. You got a topic? <laughs> well, you all seem to be some own situation with Becca. Oh, no. I oh. missed it. What's going on? What's, what's going on with that? They ain't cool no more. I mean, we really knew that, but obviously, uh, B Simone dropped a little video. I can play it in the members' live so you can see it, but B Simone, I can show you the clips. Oh, it's fine. Hello, hello, promo. Yeah, hello, promo. Yeah, it was a little bit, just a little bit shady. Well, it felt a little bit shady. Let me not judge her intention. I'm trying to change my my, my, my ways. No, I'm not. Uh, it was shady. Okay. Well, we're having a shady friends conversation on members live over there because if you can add that with JT and uh, the city Ooh, girl. Baby, JT and him. Um, I was like, oh my God. <laughs> I was like, Carisha going down, down. Okay. <laughs> she said, you've been messing with that little old diddy diddle. Okay. Not me. Not the diddy diddle. <laughs> The diddle diddle devil, okay. The diddy diddle devil. Oh no, not me. Jay, quick question. Oh man, I meant to ask this when we were talking earlier. Did y'all talk about um Shanice's mama? I I, I went over by myself before. Bruh. Uh, yeah, I went over by five. Let's let's get Yo. into it real quick, real quick, real quick. Yeah. Real quick. Go ahead, because I said my piece early. Go ahead. I, busy was carrying on about um Mariah being a threat. Shanice's mama's the biggest threat. I just was like, wait a minute, her mother's about to cause some drama. Like, I like to mother, her mom seems down, but you need to just be easy. You know, sometimes people can amp you up. <laughs> she her mother needs to dial her back down, you know, help dial her down, not amp her up. Get her into stuff that she can't handle because Shanice don't have the capacity to be tussling with, Shan with 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 Summer at all. So please don't put your daughter in harm's way. Get her puffed up. And sometimes it could be your own family, your own family that could put you into situations that's going to be problematic. So, yeah. My only problematic situation with that was she telling her not to go down the slide in the nude unless Alex went down the slide in the nude. So I said, oh, mama, <laughs> bad advice. Your daughter don't need to be going down in the nude and nobody else. <laughs> nobody else. <laughs> they got girlfriends. These people got girlfriends on this show. Like she need to stop taking her clothes off in front of everybody. OK, but hey. She like, baby, you ain't got clothes, so don't wear them, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Any thoughts, Coach, before I have Sean close us up out of here? All right, Sean, bring us in. Let's get this final. Oh, wait, Seaway came back. Let me see if she had anything. You had anything, Seaway, before Sean gives the last call? 
Okay, I'm gonna take that as a now. All right, John, you got last call for us. Listen, talk about your friends. You know, will they let you down? Will they be around? I think you know we we talk about our friendships and. Um, as much as our romantic relationships are important, I think we also need to really invest in our friendships and how we navigate them is super important. Some of those same skills that we use in resolving conflict in our, you know, our romantic relationships can be applied in our in our friendships. So, you know, really, if you have a close friend, you know, if you are in close proximity to your friend, you know, make sure y'all are working on things. Make sure that if there's anything that needs to be cleared out, you clear it out. Don't keep a running tab for your friends. So if you got stuff that's bothering you from 1926, you know, then let it out. Talk to them. Have these conversations. As Jay said, sober. That's when we don't need our bartenders, mixologist skills. We need a mocktail when we're having conversations that are of importance. So please go into your situations with a sober heart, a sober mind, and they're going to help you to have better and more healthy relationships. Back to you, Jay. Thank you for that, Sean. Okay, so we like to do a little thing over here is where y'all give tips or whatnot. And our tips is go ahead and hit that like button, share and subscribe with a friend. We have memberships open on both channels and obviously over on Little Black Books channel. Y'all better get y'all membership now because we about to have a whole live and only you only invite it over there. You know, we can't put you on the plus ones. I'm sorry. We can't put you on the plus ones. The only way you can get over there is if you get a membership, baby. You know, now if you're in the area. We might be able to gift you a membership, you know what I'm saying? But you got to be in the area. So take your butt on over to Little Black Book 91. Subscribe to that channel. Hit the like over there if you haven't already. And do yourself a favor. Join the membership because I don't know. Sometimes the gifting is there. Sometimes it's not, I, you know. But bless yourself. Bless yourself. That's what you can do, you know. And if you can, bless others while you're there. Maybe you be the one who gives out the blessings, you know. Get them in return. Anyways, we're going to get up out of here because we don't had enough tonight already, whatever. And I'll see y'all over at Little Black Book. We'll be over there. All right. Bye. There's been a lot of lies set around this dinner table here tonight, but that you can't believe.